513 WMAZ Morning starts now. Well, we're dry here in Macon, but the radar picture not dry everywhere. We'll take a look at where it's raining right now and where it's going to rain today coming up. Warner Robins Police Open New Part-Time Officer Program is the key to reducing crime. We'll explain how. And everything seems to cost more these days, including some life-saving medication. How it's impacting one Georgia family. And providing a helping hand for some bright minds in one Central Georgia school. Why one school brought back a program for students coming up in this week's School of the Week. Well, good morning. Happy Friday. You have made it to the end of the work and school week. That is definitely something to celebrate. The time is 631 on this September 9th. I'm Caitlin Heck. You're looking live over Macon. Obviously kind of a dry start to the day right now, but Alex, some parts of central Georgia not seeing that. Yeah, that's right. We've already seen rain in Perry and parts of Warner Robins this morning, and we're going to see more of that as we head through the day today. It's 74 in Warner Robins right now, 72 in Macon, 69 up in Monticello, 71 to get your morning started in Forsyth, and 74 to get your morning started down there in Telfair County. Now, the radar picture, somewhat active this morning. Let's first start off here in central parts of our area. Has steadier shower now just outside of Butler. That's about to cross into Talbot County. Southern Crawford County getting in on some of the rain action that just moved through Peach. County and still a few more showers between Bonaire down towards Perry and Henderson. That's going to cross Interstate 75 here in the next little bit. Could also see some rain here and make it over the next little bit. There's a steadier shower there coming up the interstate from Twiggs County slide up towards the north. We did have some more showers in Jasper County that has since uh, moved into Butts County and is falling apart as it moves towards Interstate 75. Today look for a high temperature right around 78. We've got the showers this morning, a steadier rainfall as we head into the afternoon hours. We'll talk more about that those afternoon hours on future view and and of course, your football Friday night forecast that comes your way here in just a few minutes, Caitlin. Thank you, Alex. Warner Robbins plans to hire more part time officers now post certified officers, including retirees, can serve alongside full time officers with the department. It's part of a part time patrol officer program rolling out to address crime in the city. Mayor LaRonda Patrick and police department say they want to recruit a broader range of candidates, including those who want to return to the force. Police Chief John Wagner says staffing challenges have plagued the department like many around the country, and this could be a way to turn things around. We certainly see crime. Violent crime is is uh, is definitely out there and we're seeing and it's being seen everywhere. But we just need more police to become proactive. And right now we're 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 chasing calls and proactivity is down. So we, we need to make sure that we have the people that can go out there. Uh, just like any full time officer, you will get paid. Chief Wagner says information on how to sign up will be available soon. This morning, Baldwin Fire investigators have answers in an arson case thanks to a man stepping forward with information. Captain Bradley Toe at Baldwin County Fire Rescue says in August of last year, they responded to a house fire on Irwinton Road. Captain Toe says the anonymous witness saw Matthew Spikes start the fire because he helped in the arrest and conviction, the fire department wanted to reward him. Toe says the witness didn't know he would get more than $3,200 for helping. Arson is one of the hardest um, crimes to prove. Um, when somebody comes forward as an eyewitness, meaning they watched everything, um, that direct evidence just makes all the difference in the world. I mean, a confession works sometimes in an arson case, but having somebody else actually see it, that just makes everything run so much smoother. The reward is part of a program that's been going on since the 1970s. All right, let's get to your national and global headlines. King Charles III will deliver his first televised address today after the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Buckingham Palace said the 96-year-old died peacefully at Balmoral, her summer castle in Scotland. President Joe Biden visited the British Embassy in Washington late yesterday and left a message in the condolence book. The Justice Department appealing a federal judge's ruling to appoint a so-called special master. He or she would review documents the FBI seized from former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate last month. The two sides were told to submit a proposed list of names for the special master by today. The DOJ says it's also making plans to return to pre former President Trump the personal items not mixed in with classified documents. Well, Californians may soon find some much needed relief from a heat wave as what's left of Hurricane K brings cooler temperatures there. The moisture from the tropical storm should help firefighters battle the deadly Fairview fire that's southeast of Los Angeles. But the heavy rain may also cause some flooding in California and in Arizona. 635, your news from across Georgia now. A Macon State prisoner begins a 300-month sentence for attempting to smuggle drugs into Georgia prisons with an undercover FBI, GBI agent. The U.S. District Attorney's Office says a judge sentenced 27-year-old Brandon McCoy from Jasper to 25 years in federal prison. It's followed by eight years of supervised release after he pleaded guilty. 
and two Cobb County deputies were killed in the line of duty last night. Our station in Atlanta says it happened while they were serving a warrant at a Marietta home. SWAT teams were at the scene and law enforcement surrounded the two story house. After ringing the doorbell with no answer, they were ambushed heading back to their cars. The deputies names have not been released, but the Cobb Sheriff says they both had been with the department for more than five years. There's also no information on what charges the suspect was wanted on. An Atlanta pastor, political operative and former high ranking city official in Atlanta, Mitzi Bickers, will spend 14 years in prison. Yesterday, a jury found her guilty of charges stemming from a long running federal investigation into corruption at City Hall. U.S. District Judge Steve Jones told Mitzi Bickers the evidence showed she was involved in a deliberate, calculated plan to cheat the taxpayers of Atlanta over a number of years. Bickers needs to pay nearly $3 million in restitution and serve three years supervised release once she's out. With inflation, things are more expensive right now, and if you've had to fill a prescription lately, you've probably seen costs up there too. Matt Norris said he saw the cost of his daughter's heart medication go up three times. 14-year-old Audrey has to take medication twice a day every day to keep her heart pumping, and she doesn't want to swallow a pill, so she uses the liquid version. Well, that liquid medicine used to cost $20 a month. It went up to $60 when they last picked it up. The drug's a compound the pharmacist binds with cherry syrup so Audrey can swallow it. When Norris looked it up online, it looks like that extra $40 charge is just for that syrup. Norris and his wife are teachers. They're insured through the state plan, which uses CVS Caremark. The company did not return our sister station 11 Alive's request for a comment. Well, people from all around the country and the world are in Macon right now to celebrate the King of Soul, Otis Redding. We all knew his music, but it's his family who knew him best. Daughter Carla Redding Andrews says Otis and Zelma Redding raised their kids to not only be humble, but to appreciate the legacy they live in. Carla is this week's guest on Central Georgia Focus. You know, I have such good memories. Mom would take us, let us go on the road on occasion, and, and we, we went to the Apollo. I can remember going there and, of course, going to Memphis where he was recording uh, at, at Stax in Memphis. So have such good memories of him and the kind uh, person he was. And, and obviously those things mean the most because that is all that I hear as I travel throughout Macon and throughout the world what kind of a person he was. He's definitely passed that down to his family with all the great work they do through the Otis Redding Foundation. You can hear more about the Redding legacy and the celebration remembering the singer's life tomorrow on Central Georgia Focus. It's right here on 13 WMAZ at noon. There's also a full weekend of events planned to celebrate what would have been Otis's 81st birthday. You can find more details right now on 13WMAZ.com. The time is now 6.38. This morning we also have some memorial celebrations happening in Macon yep. and over at GMC ahead of 9-11. Hopefully the weather will hold up for those a little bit. Yeah, I think it gets underway at 7.30 mm -hmm. and I'm hopeful for up there in Milledgeville because a lot of the rain we're seeing right now are in the central parts of our area. So fingers crossed they can make it through, uh, but certainly better than doing it as we get later into the weekend as our rain chances are only going to go up. 86 is what we did yesterday. 89 is the average high, so below that. Here's a live look at Perry where they've seen some rain this morning and here comes the current temperatures. We've got 73 in Macon, 72 in Warner Robins, 73 in Cochrane, and this map is not going to change all that much today. We're going to be hanging out in the 70s with overcast skies. So here's the radar picture. What's going on right now? First start up towards the north. We have this shower here in Butts County moving into southern Henry County. Now that's up where the outlets are there on Interstate 75. All that came from southern Jasper County. Slide this down to the south. Some rain pushing into Macon right now. So as you head outside, head to the bus stop here over the next little bit. That's going to be a possibility, especially in East Macon there along Interstate 75. Moving out of Peach County into Crawford County now. Roberta, this is moving towards you over towards Taylor County. This is beginning to move into Talbot County. Some steadier rainfall and some more rain just south of Perry now as more showers develop into parts of Bleckley County. Also down towards the south. This is Telfair County, Wheeler County, Montgomery County and in, in and around the McRae area. Some steadier rainfall that's moving towards Milan here over the next little bit. It's an unsettled morning here across the southeast. These showers we see now are going to give way to some steadier rainfall once we get later into the afternoon hours. Here's about 5 p.m. on Future View from Macon down towards Warner Robins, Cordial, all of this pulling up towards the north. This is 7 p.m. This is going to be about the football hour here in central Georgia, so the possibility of some steadier rainfall. Maybe a rumble of thunder here or there, but I think the likelihood of keeping that to a minimum is pretty high tonight, so rain's going to be the big thing, not necessarily the thunderstorms, but one or two.
It could be possible. Then into tomorrow morning, some more showers. There's 9 a.m. And then once we get into tomorrow afternoon, maybe some breaks in the clouds once we get to about 5, 6 o'clock. So an 80% chance of rain today. That's down to 70% tomorrow. And we'll continue to drop those as we get later into the week as we are going to be talking about some drier air working its way in here. Now, over the past few days, we've been talking about, you know, two to three inches of rain. Potentially, we've revised that down to one to two over the next seven days, mainly between now and say Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon ish as the moisture sure doesn't look to be as high, but still there nonetheless. Let's get a check of the tropics this morning. Caitlin was just talking about Tropical Storm K, still fairly notable, passing this close to California, not too far away from San Diego as a weak tropical storm. It's going to go up, run into the cooler water, and turn around and go right back south as it weakens. Back here in central Georgia, 78, the high temperature today. Morning showers, steadier rain for the afternoon hours. If you're able to see the sunrise, it comes your way at about 714. And your football Friday night forecast has 70s on it as well. 78 for tailgating, 72 by the time we wrap things up later on tonight. The seven-day forecast has 80s on it going forward, beginning tomorrow, a 70% chance of rain. But then take a look at next week, mid-80s, only a 10% chance of rain Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Going to feel pretty nice compared to what we've been dealing with over the past summer.